Welcome back to the Total Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Paul. Our special guest this week is Vincenza Cayetti Russo. She is the former Miss Delaware 2008 USA. I'm so excited to have her on the show. Vincenza is also just acquiring the Miss Delaware USA pageant as well. So congratulations on Vincenza on becoming the head director and the owner of the state pageant. We're going to talk about her competitions and her ascent up to winning the Delaware title and her successes owning her restaurant as well as being now the director of the Delaware pageant. So stay tuned. Our sponsor of the week is Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions. No matter if you need photos or video, we are the team to get the job done. If you need a photographer for a wedding or a special event or professional headshots, please reach out to them. And if you need a videographer to shoot a commercial, to do a music video, a videography for a wedding, they are the team to get the video job done. So no matter if or photos or videos, make sure you reach out to Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions for your next event. And welcome to the show. Hi, Paul. How are you? Oh, it's great to have my lovely friend Vincenza back on the show. And I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful now that I'm chatting with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for our listeners that aren't in on the the, uh, the gag, Vincenza is a very, very successful business woman. And uh, to get this interview in, I know, is, um, is a, a lot. So I appreciate... <laughs> Um, the you. time you're putting into doing this, um, owning a business, running a pageant organization, uh, and then all of your just person, you know, just having your own personal life and having a husband. So I'm, I'm sure oh that. Oh my gosh! Thank so you. and Thank we we know how needy the men are. So, so. <laughs> That's all right. As long as they, as long as they support. Yes. You know your dreams and goals. I think that. That's okay. Even if they're they're a little bit needy or a lot needy, that's okay. As long as they support your dreams and goals, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. Um, so for our listeners out there, I guess they would definitely uh, remember you being a pageant title holder uh, mm -hmm. with multiple titles. But where did this all start? Were you, um, as a young child, doing uh, stage performances or were you in athletics? What really... Um, started this being um, comfortable in public, being comfortable on stage? Well, it actually, um, I, growing up, I was always involved in sports. So I was nicknamed a tomboy growing up. I was, I loved soccer, football, uh, hockey, any type of sport I was always involved in, as well as dance. I grew up dancing, ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop. So I was always involved in athletics. But then one day a neighbor of ours, a neighbor of ours saw a picture of me from one of my eighth grade proms and said, oh my goodness, Vincenzo should compete in the Miss Delaware Teen USA pageant. So my mom brought this to my attention and I was 15 years old. And I, uh, I said, sure, why not? The daredevil that I was, I was like, yeah, sure. Not, why not? I'll try something new. So that's kind of how it all started. But uh, so let's just say the first year competing in the Miss Della Routine USA pageant, I had no idea what I was doing. I look back at that time and I, 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 I always laugh and say, wow, I really had no idea what I was doing. But here's the best part about it. First try, I made top five, fourth runner up. I was hooked. So the rest was history after that. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I mean, your your success in the pageantry world is uh, pretty pretty outstanding. Um, Thank you. But be, before that, so you your whole life is sports, then really? Like, so what what's what dance and sports? Dance and sports. Yep. So um, to this day, do you is there a sport that you you um, you gravitate to that you love to, to either play or watch then? Today, my sport is pageantry. Okay. That's my sport. 
as soon as I started, as soon as, as soon as I became, um, you know, familiar with pageants, uh, that became my sport. I always had the competitive side in me. So I really enjoyed the, you know, setting a goal, working hard for it and achieving it because the feeling was so rewarding. So that became my sport. Now I do enjoy watching sports on television, like soccer and football and baseball, but there's nothing like competing in pageants. Do you feel that that's the best way to go with the mindset that um, pageantry is a sport and not a competition? Because some people look at those two as two different things and put emphasis and also um, work um, in different categories for the two. That's a good question. I believe that I look at it as pageant as a sport, but I also feel it's a competition. Um, when you're competing in what, let's say, a, a soccer game, you know, you're training for it and then it's game day and there's only one winner at the end of the day. And, and that's, that's the same thing. So uh, it's a competition at the end of the day. Um, but yes, if you wanted to look at it in a different mindset as a sport, it, that actually helps with uh, training and the mental practice. Well, I, I assume the mental portion is as hard to practice and to build that strong mental as well as anything physical to go into a competition like that as well. Oh, absolutely. Your mental um, state when you're competing in a competition is extremely important, uh, just as important as your physical, you know, your physique and the attire and your wardrobe and your hair and makeup. Because if your mental state is not in tune with your heart, it's not going to come together. So uh, your mental is extremely important. That stems from, you know, your support system, making sure that you are well rested and you feel that, you know, you are believing in yourself. And that's really what it's coming down to. So you have to make sure that you believe in yourself because if you don't, then it will show on stage. From doing the show for the last two years, I've heard this ongoing introduction story several times. So it's, it's seems like there's a re revolving consistent story where someone gets a letter in the mail or a friend specifically introduces that. Do you find that to be the best way to introduce something like pageantry into um, someone's life? Um, or do you think like having that family that is pushing pageantry is the best way too? Because some, some way it has to be introduct, introduction either to the family or to the, the child or the competitor to do to do pageantry. And it's just interesting how each person's story starts. Someone inter either introduces, someone gets a letter. It's in that kind of fashion. Well, I always say that if you're not sure about pageantry, watch a, sh you know, watch a pageant. Go to one. See it in person. I think it gives a different experience to someone who's just not sure if they want to try it or compete. I always suggest to any young lady that is unsure about pageants or even their family because they just don't know about it, come watch a show. Come watch it live. Feel the experience. See the experience. See how incredible it is and how empowering it is to women. And I, you know, it's not for everyone. You and I both know that, Paul. You know, it's not for everyone. But, you know, I always say try. Give it a shot. You like it? Great. If not, at least you can say you tried something different in your life. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. And I'm totally against anyone who says it's, it's we, we've grown too far away from, in society to have women do pageantry. But that, that I think that's wrong because we don't give women enough opportunities. What... What item, what um, competitions or, 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 or sporting events that are solely women focused where there's not a men competition that is on a la large scale? There isn't. I mean, this is the only one that's really focused for women only. And there's um, so many opportunities for women to be the center of attention. I think that's really important. Do you agree with that or do you feel that, that um, we need to expand that or, or what, what's your thought on that? Or maybe I'm not down the right road. 
Yeah, no, no. I, I think I think pageantry offers so much for a young lady. I I believe that it it's confidence building. It allows you to make friends with people. I've made some of the most amazing friendships and connections with some incredible women that I've competed with. And over the years, I mean, I'm talking over the years of competing and I didn't even, I didn't even leave the pageant winning with the title, but I left with timeless friendships. I, I mean, I was able to take away so much from every competition I competed in and you learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about the people around you. It's character building, it's confidence building. And, you know, you never know what opportunity can come up from it. And pageantry has offered that to young women. And I am such a strong advocate for it. And, and I believe in it so much because of what it has done for me. And it has shaped the person that I am today. I would have never thought I would be an owner of an Italian restaurant. I'd never thought that in my life, even though I'm third generation in the restaurant industry. So it, it was only fitting that I continue the tradition by opening up a restaurant with my sister. But to have the confidence in a male dominant environment, by the way, that I'm able to stand on my own two feet and speak confidently and lead my team to be a, to run a successful establishment. So pageantry has taught me all that and has led me to this point in my life where I'm able to do all those things. So I'm the I'm the first person that will defend pageantry day in and day out. Well, I mean, you're that, that's a perfect example of what really um, all of your success has prepared you for the success you've had in life. You know, yes. you were able to compete at a very competitive level and then you're able to then uh, transition that into real life. And now you're really successful doing a high. I, what is the statistic? Is it 90 percent of restaurants that fail after five years or their first year? So it's oh. it's. Something like that. I heard that. I heard that statistic, and you know what? I was told that too. Uh, the naysayers, the uh, the haters, the negative people, the people that just don't, you know, really support. They were. They said that to my sister and I. I remember the first month. They won't last. They won't last a month. They won't last a year. And you know what? It's okay. But it was it's a good feeling to prove people wrong and work really hard for something. And we're very fortunate and blessed that we're at six years now. And and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I have to say, Paul, uh, with COVID-19 and everything that we're going through with this pandemic, we are still very, very blessed that we're able to keep our doors open because it is very hard for small businesses right now. And I have I commend small businesses that are still trying to pivot their business and reinvent themselves because it is definitely not easy. And I, I have so much compassion for others that are doing whatever they can to survive. But, uh, you know, we're very blessed to be six years in the restaurant industry and we hope to continue uh, and grow and hopefully be continue to be successful. I think people on the outside don't realize how achievement getting over five years alone being six years in the in the restaurant business that's like 30 or 40 years in a normal business because there's so much turnover with employees and you have to have a really dedicated chef and you have to continue offering new things you can't just you can't just make a widget and and you know everyone you know you can't be like apple you just make an iphone all the time you know you got to continue right. like making new things so you're right it, so it that it just for people on the outside, you know, you're just a restaurant, but no, like you have to be innovative and you have to have new items and you have to have a consistent clientele and you have to have the employees, you know, that are going to uh, make the customer happy. And then you have to have a chef that is like totally, you know, willing to work with you because the chef could like totally make your life hard. So like, it's such a, mm -hmm. I, I commend you because like, being in the restaurant business is, is got to be, if not the hardest industry to really be in because there's so much demand. Like you were mentioning earlier off the phone, like you're always, someone's always wants your attention. So, oh, yes. Or you're always putting out fires. I think that that's my favorite. I'm always putting out a fire uh, or I'm always saving the day. Um, but you know what? It takes a village. And I, I always say that. In, even in the pageant world, it takes a village, right? We hear that line often in the pageant world that, you know, it, 
It doesn't happen on your own. But the same thing, the same mentality is applied in the restaurant industry. You have to have a dedicated team. You have to have a, a hardworking team. And consistency is key in this industry. Consistency and discipline. And you have to practice that every single day and, and lead by example and then help your team you know, continue to be consistent with their service, their product, and what we offer our customers. So you get introduced to Delaware Teen USA pageant, and you've never done any other pageant at that point, correct? And you, and I guess, did you not place your first year? It, uh, it didn't sound like... Year, my first year, I made top five. So made top five. Runner-up. Well, yep, that's my first year top five, fourth runner up, and I was hooked. And okay, so that that's got to be back. like a big ego boost. But you're like, oh well, oh man, I this this is like easy, you know? Like I need to come back oh. and like win this, right? <laughs> I, I mean, is that is that like the easy. mojo you're thinking? No, I don't think I would say easy. I was my advice that was given to me before I stepped on that stage was just smile. And I was like, okay, smile, got it. And that's exactly what I did. I just smiled the whole time. I made sure I didn't lose my smile. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember my cheeks were shaking because I was advised just whatever you do, just smile the whole time you're on stage. And did you get headache smiles? Oh my gosh. I, I remember my, my face was numb. My, it was shaking. It was aching. But you know what was funny? The feedback that I got from some of the audience members was, Vincenza, you had the best smile on stage. And I was like, well, I felt like I won <laughs> at that point. But uh, I, you know what? It was something different. It was a new experience when I competed in the Miss Delaware Teen USA pageant. And I, I really enjoyed the entire weekend. And the people that I met, oh, my goodness, the, the, the other contestants, uh, the, the, the volunteers, I mean, at the time, it was under different, it was under different directorship, obviously. Of course. Um, but it was, it was wonderful. It really was. But, it was, but the, the key best, point, the, the, it, yeah, the, 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 or, but the organization, I mean, the people who run it are always changing. Um, and as we, I, I, I want to mention you're, you're now taking over the reins, but the core, yeah. the core, the core philosophy of that pageant is that it's the, the most elite pageant in the entire country. That is when, correct. when someone says you are a Miss USA girl, that means you are the best. You are the top. I mean, like, like, um, sometimes the, the girls won't uh, admit it, but the, the fact of the matter is that USA is the elite. I mean, that means that people see you above and, and I don't have a problem saying that. And I think that's how I think most people, I personally see it that way. It's above America. It's above any of the other systems. You have a TV contract, you have a na- you have a national as well as a a world title, which I think is so important to represent yes, the no. world. You know, and and I and I appreciate that compliment. And there is a sense of prestige in competing in the the Miss USA pageant on national tele- television. There is, but uh, you know what, Paul, I've had the opportunity. And to be very honest, to compete in many other organizations in my in my pageant career. And I learned so much from all of them. And they're all just as good, all of them. And it's, you know what it is? It's what you make of it. I always give this advice. And any pageant that you do compete in or be a part of, it's what you make of it. What's your mindset? What have you learned from it? And I appreciate the compliment. I'm very honored to be a part of the Miss Universe organization. And uh, I look forward to uh, continuing to help empower women in the state of Delaware. Well, I think you're going to do incredible. I think this will be just one of many um, states that you eventually run. I think you're going (laughs) to, I think, I think that, I think that most of the states need a past title holder to understand the, the trials and tribulation that go through it. And uh, I think that Delaware is such a great state to start with. You, you know, you, you already have that base. To, and, to, I've, and, you, and you know what? I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be the director, the executive state director of the Miss Delaware USA and Miss Delaware Teen USA pageants. Um, I born and raised in Delaware, 
went to school in Delaware, graduated from the University of Delaware, and I have a small business in Delaware. So I'm extremely proud of my state and whatnot. And I'm so, so looking forward to um, producing the uh, state competition. And I, and I hope to continue to grow the organization and you never, and hopefully continue to grow it and it, it will be successful. Well, I think a lot of people don't really know this, but you've been behind the stage helping producing a lot of the pageants for almost yeah. 10 years. So <laughs> The, the 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 success and um, tribulation, also uh, cutting of the teeth. You you really it just it's like um, being a professional baseball player. You've moved up the ranks, and you, it's now time for you to to become the the uh, the major league coach or GM <laughs> GM. I guess would probably. So I, I think that. it's it's just well you know well deserved. You know I, I think it's the same thing when it comes to. Um, you know, learning how to be a photographer or a videographer, and then eventually you, you get the opportunity to to work for a major studio, make a major studio movie. So, um, oh yeah, oh yes, I've had the opportunity to wear many different hats in the pageant scene, not only as a contestant, as a title holder, but then later on, after after my reign as Miss Delaware USA, I was able to come back and volunteer. I was able to be a judge, a judge's coordinator, a choreographer, a stage manager, a security guard, a ticket sales, a, <laughs> a recruiter, uh, you, you name it. I've had the uh, opportunity to wear many different hats and even host. Oh, I enjoy hosting pageants. That's actually, I enjoy hosting in general. It's actually one of my favorite, it's one of my passions. Um, so I've had the opportunity to uh, experience all these different uh, aspects of putting, you know, what it is to be a part of a competition, a pageant. And I, I love it. I love all of it. And now that I have this new leadership position, I am so excited to put together a team and put together a phenomenal state production and really help Delaware shine at the national competitions. Well, I really respect and appreciate that you put in the effort. I don't know how much you've read about Walt Disney's um, management style, but if he would hire someone to work either at the studio or at the park when he was still alive, he would require them to be a popcorn salesman for a, a week uh, and, and and actually um, see how it felt to actually work in the general public and work a lot of the different. So for you to basically work every Pacific um, position at the state pageant and understand all of that, I don't see how you're not going to be successful because no one can come up to you and, and give you any kind of excuse because you can say, well, I actually did that job. There's, you know, that doesn't compute because they can't lie to you. There's no way. So, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I think, I think like you're going to be able to really run a, a really strong, fast ship. Um, Thank and you. That I, I can't, I think you're going to easily be able to expand and take on other territories in the future. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. And I hope, I hope that, uh, that I will uh, be able to, uh, fulfill what everything you had just said and and more because uh you know it, it it all stems from your team i really believe that and that's something that i learned in the restaurant industry because i can't run i can't run this entire restaurant by myself oh no oh it will fail you need a good team in place so it stems from your team and making sure you have a good team uh, put together that understands the mission of what the Miss Universe organization value instills, you know, they instill the values of empowering women. And I think that's key in putting together a team that making sure that all of everybody that's in your corner understands, you know, what are we here for? We're here for these young women. We're here to empower them. We're here to help build confidence. We're here to guide them, mentor them, coach them, and show them that they can be confident, and empowered too. So your first year you do fabulous. So <laughs> what, what, 
what's your next role? How how does the <laughs> what's you, my yeah right? So you're are you? I, I I see. I, I love to know. I love to flip back and forth because sometimes it, people get bored. So so yeah. yeah. So you're you come back and did you do better or or did you personally do better or how how did you place and how did, how did that year go? Oh, so we're we're um we're taking it back to my competition year. Yes. Okay. So after. Oh, okay. So. Your second year in the team. My second, my second year, I came back with uh, more experience, knowledge, and training. I knew what I had to do, and I trained really hard, really, really hard. And I was fourth runner up again. <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, but you know what? I, I kept going back. And um, let's just say nine years, nine years later. I finally won the title of Miss Delaware USA. Right. So I know. So were I, I guess the the years that you were continuing, were you mm-hmm. getting stuck at that top five level? Is that what? Yes. Okay. So yep. for our mm-hmm. listeners that are like competing multiple times and they're at the same kind of like threshold, what do you think internally were you thinking at that point, and what are you looking now that you think that you did that? one over the crowd because you know they clearly noticed you and you can were consistent so what do you think eventually allowed them you know you got older so you had to go to the 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 Miz category but what what do you think got you over that hump and they said okay let's give her a shot this year she's ready I I had to believe in myself and I think I had to work hard for that. And it took me a little longer than most people, but that's okay because I learned so much from not winning. And I always say you learn you learn more from not winning than even winning because you you realize, okay, I need to work harder, I need to train harder, I need to uh, I need to adjust this, or I need to try a different color dress, or I need to learn how, you know, take more classes on how to do my hair, or I need to practice walking or interview, and I put the time in, and I kept practicing, and I think, I think the year that I won, it clicked. It was, it was my time, and I felt that I had that mindset that, Vincenza, you, you have this is for you. You can do this. And I never gave up. I always said perseverance is key. Never give up. Follow your dreams. And you have to believe it if you want to achieve it. I mean, I think that's a really great mindset. Do you think you, because you've gone through all those trials and tribulations, do you think because it was so hard to achieve it, you, you, um, like you hold that more, like having that big first victory and being at USA, do you hold that more tight because of it? Hmm. I I have to say that I I value the uh, the win so much more because I worked so incredibly hard for it. But you know the feeling of setting a goal, working very very hard and achieving it. It is such a good feeling. You can't put a price tag on that. It, I mean, it's so rewarding to set a goal, work hard, train hard, and achieve it. And I have so much value. I hold so much value to that win in my life that it was probably the game changer for me. I think that it was it was the most memorable year ever. Uh, competing at Miss USA was the best experience in the entire world. I wish I could relive that whole whole. It, by the way, it was three weeks at the time. I mean, it was, it was, and it was in Las Vegas. Three weeks. So, that, now that's yeah. awesome. You know, yes, even Adriana time, didn't get three weeks. I mean, that's great. It was, it was about three weeks. It was wow. uh, in Las Vegas. It was phenomenal. It was the best experience of my life. And the people that I met every, every part about it, uh, the, the chaperones, the security guards, the, the choreographers, the producers, the contestants, everything about it was the best experience of my life, and I wish I could relive it all over again. <laughs> well, I I see why you have never left your your home your home pageant state pageant and always volunteered to be a part of it because it sounds like it 
really made an endowment into your personal life. So, mm-hmm. well, I believe it. I believe in what it stands for, and I'm very proud of the state of Delaware. I'm very proud of the state I'm from, and the sisterhood in Delaware is phenomenal, Paul. The legacy. I call them the, the legacy. Um, they are incredible. I mean, incredible women. All of them. And I, uh, as soon as I became the executive state director of Miss Delaware USA, Miss Delaware Teen USA pageants, I started to reach out to every single former. I started to message them, contact them. And my goal is to assemble the legacy, assemble the sisterhood. We need to bring them all together because they are the, they are the, the root of what makes the Miss Delaware USA, Miss Delaware Teen USA organization a strong. They are the reason. So uh, I'm, oh, I'm so proud of, phenomenal. I'm so proud to hear a director appreciate that and realize that because in all sincerity, you have no, you have no ties to them because you never work with them, but it is so important to respect the past and history is so important. And I really commend you for doing that so much. I have, I have a, I have this really good idea and I really wish one of these directors, meaning you or someone else would do something like this. So just, this is a pitch idea. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a free advice. Okay. But I think having a legacy Mm -hmm. sash that has your year in big letters or big numbers with the, you know, with your title and it's black or, or gold, something that is totally opposite of what the sash looks like. So when the girls come into the theater or the event, they know that, oh, that's 1966. Oh, that's uh-huh. 83. And you, it's, everyone has the sash. And then it's like, it's the requirement. You have to wear it. You know, it's just like, you know, when you have a girl's party on a cruise ship and everyone wears the T-shirt, this is your... I just think it would look so classy, you know, and then you like you're saying, assemble the class. You have everyone wear the the legacy sash. And no yes. one and no one does it. And I thought it would be such a cool idea. No, you never know. It's actually a very neat idea. I appreciate the uh the idea and uh, you just never know. Okay. You never know. <laughs> I just wanted to take one second from this great interview and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Productions. No matter if you're planning a wedding, a special event, or you just need an amazing headshot, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go just go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to the show and listen to this great interview. You come back after your year as Miss Delaware USA and um, you decide to compete in several other systems, correct? And mm-hmm. you win several other state competitions, Um representing several other competitions. Was it yes, much easier to do that? Because not because it was USA, but like, okay, deep breath. They like me. I know I can be a state representative. I did it for a year. Was that the burden that you felt you had taken off? Or do you think they recognized that you had ready represented USA and that you, you didn't necessarily – you weren't necessarily competing with the field. You were, you were not trying to lose it, I guess. Like if you right. were, if you were going to go yeah. and compete with uh, competition X, it was yours to win, to lose, not to win, I guess. Right. So I did have a little bit of experience underneath my belt um, after competing in right. this U.S. competition. So that confidence was there just because of my experience on a national stage. And a very big, a very big stage for that matter. Um, but I always believe you never get, you should never get too comfortable. You have to train just as hard, and that's exactly what I did. I trained harder. I was more 
uh, dedicated to my interview practice. I hired a coach. I hired an interview coach, a walking coach. And I knew all of this stuff because I had competed for so many years prior. And I did it. I won this big title. But when you, um, you know, when you want to get back into competing again, you have to, you have to almost get like a refresher course on everything. And you, you can, you never should have the attitude that you don't need practice. You should never have the attitude. Uh, oh, I'm good enough. Um, no, no, no. You never get too comfortable because that's when you're setting yourself up for failure. You need to train harder. You need to dedicate more time and hours because the bar is set so high. And I knew that the bar was set so high for me because I just came off a Miss USA stage. So I had to work just as hard. And that's exactly what I did. And I was very fortunate that I was successful even after my Miss USA years that I, you know, I, can t I, I went on to other organizations and I competed and I won. Um, but I never got comfortable because that I knew for a fact that I would be setting myself for, up for failure if I did. For the girls that are weighing their option, is there an easy way to really just kind of qualify like what the differences is? Because maybe some are more of a scholarship and the, the goal is to win uh, money for college specifically. And some of them are, are more beauty competitions that have scholarship, but they have more of a modeling component. Is that the way to do it? Or is it... There are several other ways to really to quantify 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 the difference in these pageants um, that are out mm -hmm. there. So I was very fortunate that I had the opportunity to compete in so many different pageant organizations in my time, and so I I have had the experience and knowledge in all of them, and it depends on your your goals you know what are your goals where do you want to go with it and I learned so many wonderful things and I took away so much from every single organization that I competed in and I learned a lot about myself and I think that's what's most important that you know what did you learn about yourself and you know maybe a certain organization wasn't a good fit for you. And that's okay, but you learned something about yourself. You learned, you made, you probably made new friends too. I bet you made new friends, but you learned, you learned so much. And you, it's always okay to, you know, try something new. Like, for example, if you're not sure about competing in the Miss Delaware USA or Miss Delaware Team USA pageant, I say, well, give it a shot. Try it. If it's, if it's for you, great. If not, you could say you tried it, but maybe there's another organization out there that might be a better fit for you, but you won't know until you try. I mean, I, I think that's a great uh, philosophy and I, I'm definitely of the opinion, you know, might as well, if you're going to do it, might as well go for, go for the, go from the top. And then if, if it's just not a right fit, there's so many other opportunities that you can shoot for. Though I think the, I think uh, showing up is half the battle. Yes. And I think that is what I, you know, the most important thing you have to remember as a young woman, that's not sure, you know, they're thinking that, you know, I'm not sure about competing in any type of pageant. You know, I say just pick one and try it because showing up is half the battle. Getting on that stage takes a lot of courage. And I always say, you know, to any young lady that is so scared to be in front of an audience, you know, I commend you for having enough courage to just get on that stage because that's half the battle. <laughs> so sincerely, Vincenza, for our listeners out there that are having lack of confidence and, you know, they're, you know, heading towards college or they're just graduating high school. Do you think you are where you are today and successful and being able to run a business because of pageantry because of the skills, or do you think you could have achieved that by just going to college and, and getting around really well educated, you know, financially um, smart people as well? Competing in the Miss Delaware USA and the Miss Delaware Teen USA pageants is, um, has made me who I am today. I think 
that if I would have never stepped foot on that stage as a 15 year old high schooler in the Miss Delaware Teen USA pageant, I don't think I'd be the person I am today. I think it has shaped my character. It has helped me believe in myself, build confidence and be stand true to the woman that I am. I have a voice now. I never had a voice when I was that age. I was so scared and timid. Even though I enjoyed playing sports and dancing, I was so scared to speak. And competing in pageants have, has given me the opportunity to have a voice, to be able to speak about topics that I'm passionate about. For example, I, I'm a huge advocate for promoting literacy. That I, I co-founded my own nonprofit literacy organization as an 18-year-old high school senior called Success Won't Wait Incorporated. And still to this day, I'm active in promoting literacy and providing young children with books and encouraging them to read. Pageants have allowed me to develop that confidence to do things like that. That's, and that's why I say that, yes, pageants have made me who I am today. Well, I think it's really important to really promote that because uh, I think um, women, I think, men specifically don't give women an opportunity to speak and we and society specifically holds women down so i think that if you're struggling with that i think i agree with what potential is saying is that if you want to to have a voice that you will definitely find it in pageantry i've seen it several times so i agree with that statement uh, entirely so um, and I've seen women go from very shy to being very outspoken and, and confident and, and knowing what they want. So, and that's so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very, very important. And you know what? You learn so much about yourself and you develop so many skills, lifelong skills that you can take in your, into your career. I was able to develop skills of speaking in front of a camera or speaking with another person, a total stranger, that I apply those skills to this day in with my business. I I use those skills. I'm table side serving customers I've never met before. I have the confidence to have a an a, a very honest and genuine conversation with them confidently. Pageants have helped me develop those skills to prepare me for that. So you you'd be surprised you would be surprised that you learn so much and develop so many lifelong skills that you can apply to any career you set your heart out for. That's so. I mean, I agree with you, right? I mean, I mean, a lot of people, I a lot of people that aren't pageant people. One of the things that they always throw up in my face is um, they'll say, "Well, pageantry is like um, grooming people to be an actor or a model." But you just proved that the skills that, yes, you were able to do those skills and be read in front of a proper, but you were able to also uh, cause um, help a customer that's in need at your restaurant. If you didn't, were if you weren't able to communicate properly, you would have probably escalated the situation. So those are skills you definitely need. So I mean, absolutely, Communi- uh, just simple communication skills that you you just to interact with your coworkers in your working environment you develop those skills in pageantry and i i was able to do that and i apply all those skills today every single day at work <laughs> i just wanted to take one extra second and talk about our sponsor of the week Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Production. No matter if you're planning a wedding and you need a wedding videographer, you're doing a music video, or you're doing commercial, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to this great interview. All right, Vicenza, this is the part of the show where I thank you as a guest and I let you take control of the show and bring up any topic that's really important. So we've learned all about you winning several titles and being really successful and being a successful entrepreneur. So is there anything going on that we need to emphasize that 
maybe the audience would learn more about you and uh, would, would love to know about you. Well, I think it's important to promote the state pageant for 2021. I think that's really important. So um, with hopes of everything being okay in 2021, uh, obviously with COVID-19 restrictions and this pandemic, we always have to be optimistic for the future. Um, you know, mark your calendar for April 2021, the Miss Delaware USA and the Miss Delaware Teen USA pageants. April 2021. If you are interested in finding out more information and keeping up to date, MissDelawareUSA.com. You can also follow us on all of our social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Send us a message if you're interested in competing or you want to find out more information. I am very good at responding within 24 hours because I am so passionate about this the new position and I want it to be successful and I want to provide a phenomenal experience to every single contestant and our new title holders. Speaking of title holders, I have, oh, to, yeah, mention, you, I, I have to mention our current Miss Delaware USA. The two current girls are super fabulous. Yes, yes, and the current Miss Delaware Teen USA 2020, they are fabulous. Samantha Repass and Katie Guevara, they are phenomenal. I'm very blessed to um, help them. Um, and guide them through their journey. They will be competing soon for the Miss USA competition and the Miss Teen USA competition in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, so I, it's really exciting. I I, I want to chime in. So I, I had heard that the rumor was that most of the state competitions were going to be in April. So that's exciting to know that's basically confirmed. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I heard upsetting but i understand because of covid that a lot of the girls had to do virtual pre-interview so i is it correct that they've already gone the both the delaware um teen and uh, ms and teen have already gone through their interview is that correct prior yes, to that is, yes that is correct they actually completed their virtual interviews their miss usa and miss teen usa virtual interviews last week and that was really exciting for them. And it was a very good experience for them. Because okay. being that the, the entire, actually, the almost the entire country is virtual right now. A lot of, you know, things, whether it's uh, your career, your job, school, or even if you have to go to a doctor's appointment, a lot of things are virtual. So it was really neat that the Miss Universe organization was able to pivot and stay relevant through this pandemic because I have to say as a business owner in the restaurant industry I know what it is to have to pivot your business to survive and it's really really neat uh, that the Miss Universe organization was able to stay relevant and pivot to stay safe for the contestants and the staff more importantly stay safe but continue to go you know the show continues to go on which I thought was really awesome and uh, both the uh, Miss Delaware USA, Katie, and Miss Delaware Teen USA, Samantha, had a phenomenal virtual interview. I was able to chat with them both, you know, both after afterwards, and they were so pleased with the experience. So I'm glad that it went well. Yeah, I saw their photos. They look super fabulous. Um, Thank you. That was all them. That's I, their personality. That I, um, hey, the shoes were just uh, um, for a guy. I really love women's. You know, I I think it 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 really does finish off a an outfit for a woman. So I think um, shoes were perfect for the outfits, and um, I uh, I absolutely agree with you. And I applaud the Miss Universe organization for um, being so socially responsible as well as being um, very authentic to pivoting and not um putting the girls in more harm and having to do the interviews and and there physically and making them actually be there i think it's just shows how smart the organization is it is from the top down that, oh yes uh, and i have to emphasize the fact that the safety precautions and that they're taking prior to every contestant arriving and what they're putting in place during the actual competitions and the rehearsals and throughout the week, it's incredible what they're doing. They are going above and beyond. I am impressed 
And I, I can assure, I feel safe that both Katie and Samantha will be safe there the entire time because they are taking the necessary precautions to make sure that not only the contestants are safe, but also the staff is safe as well. Well, the nice thing also is that because of COVID, and it's going to be a smaller um, invited or paid um, contest um, paid audience. So it's going to be so unique. And so um, there will never be a Miss uh, USA audience that is so like small and, and, um, and, and pushed together, you know, that, you know, you know, because usually it's in a big, big arena and it says, this is going to be such a very unique thing and it will never happen again. And uh, yes, I we are we are making history this year. Yes, we are. We are definitely making history. The Miss USA and Miss Teen USA pageants. I mean, they're making history by just moving forward with the competition mm -hmm. and the way that they they feel is safe and best for everyone. And it's uh, really awesome that they are. And I commend them. For well, that. I love the I love where they're doing it too. Um, it's going to be at the Elvis Presley. Um, um, facility i guess it's it's across the street from in, his in physical graceland. house in graceland yeah right. in graceland yep that's so, right so yes are they actually staying in the new hotel too because they built a brand new the that is the host hotel for the awesome um from what i when i i was there three years ago and they were in the process of physically building it so i even the building the welcome center that was originally there has been knocked down so the building that they're going to be in is brand new so they're going to have a treat for sure. Very excited. Oh, I'm sure they're so excited. And I hear that the entire grounds is, is spectacular. So if you're it an is. Elvis fan, I, that's what I've been told. If you're an Elvis fan, you are going to be on cloud nine the entire time. <laughs> um, so we, we want to help you out. So is there anything else going on that we, we, I, is there any special deals going on at the restaurant? Or is, <laughs> there any, is there any, is there any, is there anything that people should be aware of? Because also, um, you have a family ice cream shop, but does that run, is that run 12, 12, 12 months of the year? Is that only a summer? Uh, That's a seasonal business. So okay. we actually are, clo we are closed for the season. It's called ice cream delight and it's right behind, actually it's right behind the restaurant. It's well, that a, makes, yes, it's a, Hey, it's, um, just go out and let's get the dessert. Right. You know, right. Exactly. <laughs> so we are closed for the season. We, we will reopen in March of 2021. So, um, uh, we are right now that is shut down, but we are continuing to make some sweet treats through the restaurant. So if you love ice cream cakes or ice cream sandwiches or boozy ice cream, we are offering all of those items through our through the restaurant and i don't think i even mentioned the name of the restaurant so yeah i don't think you have <laughs> and they're like that. they're like what's this restaurant yeah. but we don't what's know where it is called? it must be in delaware but we have no idea where it is right so. it is in wilmington delaware actually the northern part of delaware 20 minutes from philadelphia airport so if you're flying into philadelphia airport it is 20 minutes one mile off of i-95 and it's called vincenza and margarita italian american bistro but for short we are known as VNM Bistro. So um, right now, because of COVID nineteen and this pandemic, uh, we are currently uh, just a takeout business. Our dine-in service is closed at this time, but we are offering our our full menu plus new additions. We've implemented a new VNM market. And uh, we have all these great items that we are selling. Uh, so if you're interested, check out our menu at vmbistro.com. And uh, let me know if you're coming. Let me know. I'm usually the girl answering the phone every single day, Tuesday through Saturday. Hey, well, you, so, someone, has, someone has to turn the lights on. So, you know. <laughs> yep. And I'm here every day. It, it's a shame <laughs> that um, we're in such a seasonal climate where we get extreme heat and extreme cold um that you couldn't have a a outside venue you know it's it's going to get too cold and it's going to snow where um it's not really feasible for people to sit outside i'm sure that if you had a, a restaurant in a more seasonal climate that you could you would be, be open to offering that 
already. So yeah, actually, so we did. We do have the option in the state of Delaware to expand our outdoor seating. Oh, you do. However, that. we, uh, you know, we, my sister and I, we made the decision, the difficult decision, not to move forward with it's just because it wasn't feasible for us. And every business and every restaurant is set up differently. You know, they have a different, you know, structure. And you have to do what's best for you to survive this pandemic. And we were very fortunate that we were, we were able to pivot our business into um, we were we took our whole fine dining fancy restaurant and turn it and we turned it into a full blown takeout pizzeria overnight. So we're a pizzeria essentially. So we were able to pivot our business to get to a point where we're just getting by to keep the lights on right now we're not setting the world on fire but we're just getting by to keep the lights on but we made the you know the, the decision to maintain the the takeout the way we're, we are doing it right now just because we're we're just there's too many uncertainties we're not sure you know where will there be a spike will restaurants have to shut down completely so we don't know so it's uh, it's very scary with uh, so how, how many uncertainties are out there. But I will mention that the Delaware Restaurant Association and the state of Delaware is doing a phenomenal job with uh, providing resources and support for every Delaware restaurant. So I'm very proud of them. Well, all I can say is um, please try and hang in there. Thank um, you. I remember reading the story about um, um, Prohibition when they banned liquor sales and the Bush family couldn't sell um, beer anymore. So for the eight years that it was in Prohibition, they would sell other things. So as in life, everything will shall pass. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think you're going to come out like gangbangs because people are going to, um, you know, they're, if you're hanging in there now, I can see that you're going to blow. You're going to just go through the roof because they're going to, they're gonna. Well, we want your pizzas now, and then you're gonna be able to get in the high end business. Go back to your, to your, your custom high end business that you were doing. So I think you're gonna do really well because if you're, uh, if you just, so. if you, <laughs> if you're doing enough to keep the, the doors open, I think you're gonna build a, a really good loyal cri uh, clientele. I mean, I, I hope and pray that is the case, Paul. I really do because the last thing we need in our community is for another small business to shut down. And I, I say I stress this so much. We cannot have businesses shutting down left and right. We need we need to show support. And I, I recommend that whether you're in the state of Delaware or another state that is taking a huge hit with COVID-19, support your local businesses, show them support, post about them, post good things, positive things and and go show the support by doing takeout because if restaurants shut down in your community, it will affect your neighborhoods and at the end it will affect your family and children. So very, very important to support local businesses. I can't uh this I can't agree with you more because the simple fact is the restaurant is usually the heart and soul of of the how the the industry goes. When you don't have a restaurant, then you usually don't have businesses that need uh, you know, lunch hour, if they don't have lunch hour, then why would you have a business downtown? All this not, so usually the restaurants, if they disappear, then your downtown district goes. And so, yeah. The, Very important. Yeah, yep. it is. It really is. All right. Well, <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. I think we've really explained why pageants has really have made such an impact am i right i mean i don't yes yeah. no i i, I and thank I, you I thank so, you paul for uh inviting me on your show and allowing me to have a voice to continue to have a voice to speak about all my passions and my goals and uh, and more importantly my new position as the executive state director of, as miss of miss delaware usa and miss delaware teen usa pageants I'm very grateful for your time, and I uh, I hope to see you soon in person. Oh yes, um, I <laughs> I I am sadly um, still hiding with COVID. Um, we have to be, be safe, very, right? yeah, be, I'm being a little cautious, but uh, I'm definitely okay. I'm definitely thankful for you to come on and gracious uh, to get a director from the best pageant in the entire country to come on and talk. If my podcast is really appreciative, and I appreciate you giving the blessing to to uh, have the, your girls um, come on. So I've interviewed your, your current Ms. 
and uh, I really appreciate you uh, allowing us to have her on the show. And her her interview will be um, debuting shortly, so I'm really excellent, excellent. yeah. So thank you so much, and I I look forward to having you back on. And congratulations right. congratulations on uh, your new journey. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vincenza, for coming on the show. And so congratulations on being the director of the Delaware USA pageant. I am so happy to have you as a friend and always phenomenal to have friends going out there and really pursuing their dreams and um, finally achieving a goal of being uh, the, the top director at the biggest pageant in the entire country. Uh, USA. So um, congratulations on that. And I would definitely encourage you if you're in the Delaware area, you should be going and and checking out the Delaware uh, website and you should sign up and Vicenza will do everything she can to be to help you there. And no matter when, win or lose, you'll build great friends and Vicenza will be a great director if you win and you, um, you work with her and, uh, I really encourage everyone to sign up if you're in the Delaware area. As always, I know you guys hear us all the time. Please like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell and click all so that you get all of our videos. And don't forget, we also do a movie review show with my co-host, Ivan Carlos, where we talk about movie reviews. So on the movie breakdown. So please check out our movie reviews, our podcast. And as always, please stay 